Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Hegarty here, and in this video, I'm going to take you through how to add and subtract fractions. Okay, so by the end of it, hopefully, we'll be able to do just that and add and subtract some fractions. Before we start, I would like to uh, point out a classic mistake to you. If you can understand this mistake, it will help gain insight into the methods we're doing in this video. Now, this is a classic mistake and it's it's obvious and I see why uh, kids and people do it. If you have a half and you add a half, it's very tempting to just uh, take the numerators, the top numbers, and add them to get two. So one and one is two. And it's very tempting to then just take the denominators, the bottom numbers, and add them and get four. So you would get the statement that a half plus a half is equal to two quarters. That's wrong, okay? You can't just add the tops of fractions and add the bottoms of fractions, okay? It's a classic mistake. It's easy to see why people do it, but it's not true. I wanna show you quickly why it's not true. And always, I draw a picture to show these things. So, imagine I had uh, an object there and I wanted to represent a half, okay? That there is going to represent a half. I've got, I've drawn a block and I've cut it into two, and that represents half of the block. Now imagine I was going to add another half to this. So here's another block of similar size, the same size, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take that, and I'm actually gonna add another half. This time I'm gonna color in this side of it. So I'm going to add the two yellow pieces together. So that would be, the top is obviously, uh, a half and I'm adding on a half at the bottom so I'm working out a half plus a half as up here and clearly you can see that when if I did that a half plus a half would equal one okay would be equal to one which is not the same as two quarters okay so this is not true here it just proves uh, to you that you can't just add the tops and bottoms of fractions when adding now um, let's go and show you what you actually can do with fractions. So understanding that classic mistake should help you with this process. So here's example one. We want to add together one fifth plus three fifths. Now as always what I'm going to do is draw pictures to represent these. Okay so firstly one fifth plus three fifths. Let's draw a fifth and underneath it I'm going to draw uh, three fifths. So I'm going to divide this the top shape into fifths. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I'm going to divide the bottom shape into fifths as well. Okay, so let's first of all represent a fifth. So this here, it, the whole uh, length here is going to represent the number one or a whole. And so I'm going to draw one fifth, and one fifth is clearly going to be that there. And that, I'm sure you can agree, is one fifth. Now, on the, I'm going to add to it three fifths. So I'm actually going to use a different color uh, pen here just to make it obvious. And I'm going to take these three fifths here. Each of these is a fifth, so three of these boxes are going to be equal to three fifths. Okay? So clearly, here, we've got three fifths. Now what happens when you add uh, together one fifth, add three fifths? Well, I'm sure you can see that you're going to get yourself a four fifths. Okay, so, and just to make that obvious there, if I add those together, I get four fifths colored in. So the answer to this question is four fifths. One fifth plus three fifths is four fifths. And we can generalize this rule. In general, the following is therefore true. When you add or subtract fractions with the same denominator, in this case we had the denominator being 5 in each case, so when the denominator is the same, you can just add the fractions and get the answer. So 1 fifth plus 3 fifths is the same as 1 plus 3 all divided by 5, which is 4 fifths. So when the denominators are the same, you can just add the tops or the numerators of the fractions. And there we go, that's our first sort of rule. Okay, let's do another example, example two. Okay, in this example, you'll notice 
that we have the same number on the bottom. We have the same denominator here. So we can just use the rule we talked about previously and 3 sevenths plus 6 sevenths will equal 9 sevenths. We can just add the top and that is equal to 9 sevenths as follows. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Let's just quickly draw a picture just to make sure that the rule was actually right the last time and make ourselves feel a bit uh, feel confident, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, draw a box and I'm going to divide it into sevenths. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, and just even those out a little bit so it looks more realistic. Now the reason I've divided it into three, I do, I'll show you in a second. At, on the top I want to represent three sevenths, okay? So the whole box across represents one, I want to represent three sevenths here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour in three of them. So three out of the seven is going to be coloured in, and there we go, that there represents three sevenths. So this whole thing represents three sevenths. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and draw six sevenths. So six sevenths, I'm going to colour those in with maybe a different colour. Let's go for blue. And I'm going to colour in six of them. So they would be six. And that represents six sevenths, okay? So this here, six sevenths, is represented by this amount here. Now if we combine them together, uh, the question is, how much would we get? Well, if we add these two together, obviously we're going to get, in the last one I'll try and show what the answer is, we're going to get three of the sevenths here uh, coloured in, and then we're going to get one, two, three, four more of the sevenths coloured in, but we're also going to get two left over, because we're adding six sevenths, we've only added four, so we have to add another two sevenths here. Okay? And therefore, we can see that the answer is 9 sevenths. But moreover, a better way of maybe showing it is that it's one whole, all of that is one whole, and it's 2 sevenths left over. So this is also 1 and 2 sevenths. So we were right in the rule we use. Okay, next example. Evaluate a half plus a quarter. The best way to do this, again, is to draw a picture. So let's have a go. We're going to do a half and we're going to add a quarter to it. And we're going to see what we get uh, in the last box here. So let's draw our, a half. So firstly, up here, we're going to draw ourselves a half, and that represents a half. Okay, so there we have drawn a half. The whole length obviously represents one, and that represents a half. And now we're going to represent a quarter. So let's draw, let's separate the second box into quarters. So we'll divide it into half and then we'll divide it for uh, another one so that it's in quarters. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a quarter. Now I can draw the quarter anywhere, but for, the, for ease, why don't I draw the quarter here? Okay, so there you go, we have our quarter. And we want to combine these together. Now you can see it's hard to... The length of that is different from the length of that, so it's not obvious how to combine them. But what we can do is we know that a half is equal to two quarters, as follows. So what we could do is we could divide the last box into quarters, and what we could say is we could say that here is our half, which is the same as two quarters, and here is our quarter there, so a half plus a quarter must be equal to three quarters. Okay? And that's an explanation of why that's true. Now, in general, the rule is if you add or subtract if adding or subtracting fractions is your aim, you must make the denominators the same before you add them. Here we had different denominators, we had a two and a four. We made them both four, so we made a half the same thing as two quarters and then we added it to a quarter to get three quarters. Now, uh, we're, we're going to try and draw pictures all the time for this, but what I'm going to actually try and show you is, an, is a way of doing this without a picture, so you can see a more generalized way. 
if you want to make the denominators the same, what you can think of is you can think of what is the lowest common multiple, okay, of 2 and 4. I.e., what number, what's the smallest number that 2 and 4 divide into? Well, it's 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep that 4 the same, and we're going to therefore keep that 1 the same, and we're going to change this to a 4. What did I have to do to this 2 to make it a 4? Well, I multiplied it by 2, so I must multiply the top by 2 as well to keep the fraction equivalent or the same. We'll have to see the equivalent fractions video to understand that more fully, and so it would be 2 quarters plus 1 quarter, which would be 3 quarters. So there's the more uh, numerical um, and generalised form of drawing the pictures down there. Okay, let's have a go at another one. Example 3, 7 tenths subtract 1 fifth. Again, we can draw pictures. Okay, again, there's no harm in drawing pictures here at all. So what we got, let's have a go at doing that. It's always handy to do it. Let's draw three uh, boxes out as follows. On the top, we're going to draw 7 tenths. The second one, we're going to draw 1 fifth. And then we're going to do the combined answer in the bottom. That whole uh, length is to represent 1. Okay, let's split it up into tenths. So the top one is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Obviously, you've got to make that a bit uh, more accurate there. something like that. So each of those represents a tenth. Okay, and we're going to colour in seven of them to represent seven tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go, there's seven tenths. So all of that represents seven tenths. And now we're going to subtract a fifth. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to split the second one into fifths. Now, here are fifths. One, two, three, four, five. They're in fifths now. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, subtract a fifth. So let's draw a fifth maybe here. Why not? Actually, why don't I draw the fifth over here? like that. Okay, so I've got a fifth, I've got seven tenths, I'm going to do seven tenths subtract a fifth. If I subtract a fifth, you can see from seven tenths, it's like taking that amount away, and I'll have one, two, three, four, five. I will have five tenths as my answer. Okay, that was the picture way of doing it. Okay, for understanding, let's do the sort of more generalized version. If adding or subtracting fractions is your aim, make the denominators the same. What number can you think of that 10 and 5 divide into the smallest number? Well, it's 10. 10 goes into 10 once, uh, 5 goes into 10 twice. So make the denominators both 10, keep the subtract there. The 7 can stay as it is, you haven't changed that. In order to make this 5 turn to a 10, I doubled it, so double the top as well, so it stays as the same fraction. So you would have 7 tenths subtract 2 tenths, which is clearly 5 tenths. Now 5 tenths, as you can see in the picture, 5 tenths is going to be equal to a half. Okay, So you can divide top and bottom by 5 and get a half. 5 parts out of 10 in total is a half. Okay, and we're nearly there. The last one, let's do 6 sevenths subtract 1 fifth. Okay? Now it's difficult to draw a picture of this. What we're going to do is we're just going to go straight for the numerical way of doing it here. Okay? You can't be drawing pictures with this many. So, the question is what is the lowest common multiple of 7 and 5? What is the smallest number that 7 and 5 go into? Well, if you think about it, if you write out the 7 times table, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, and you write the 5 times tables, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. The smallest number in both of their times tables is 35. 
So I'm going to make the bottom numbers 35. And I'm going to keep the subtract in there. Now, what did I do to 7 to make it 35? I multiplied it by 5. So you must do that to the top. And I would get 30. And what did I do to the 5 to make it 35? I multiplied it by 7. So I must do that to the top as well. And we have 30 35ths subtract 7 35ths. And the answer is 23 35ths. And we're done. So that's everything you need on adding and subtracting fractions, why it works and how it works numerically. Here's a past exam paper question. See if you can do it using our method and draw the picture to demonstrate you understand. And if you want to check your answer, it's on the website under the past paper sections. Thanks loads for watching.